Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruthie, Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1946, Part 23. Florida School for the Deaf and the Blind, St. Augustine, Florida, November 11th, 1946. My Dearest Mother, what a difference a year makes, at least as far as weather is concerned. A year ago, we were in Edmonton wearing fur coats, galoshes, and freezing. This year, same date, everyone's in shorts and bras and melting. It's not exactly that hot, though, here, near the water, and with so many trees around, but the sky's a beautiful blue and the sun's lovely and warm. It's a beautiful day. It was a holiday for nearly everyone but us. However, when you're through work at 1 o'clock p.m., it's as good as a holiday. Only now I'm finding that I don't feel that I accomplished enough in school. Too short a day. Never satisfied, eh, dear? I'm wondering how you all are now, and if you know how Grandma is. Well, my cold's a bit better, which helps matters some, and getting paid made things pretty swell again. Friday took in a shrimp dinner at the Blue Heron, football game and dancing at the casino. Sounds good, doesn't it? We went into Jacksonville Saturday and did some shopping. I finally found two dresses I like, a blue sort of linen one with cap sleeves, gold buttons down the front, very nice. The black gabardine has buttons to the waist in back and a wide, patty green leather belt. I like them. Jacksonville was crowded because of a football game there, too. The Army Notre Dame was a tie, so they didn't call the bet. Was it ever an interesting, Mother? We went through Fort Marion or Fort Malanzas. It's only two blocks from here, and we go through the grounds going to town. It has been under four flags, and we were guided all through the barracks, rooms, ammunition rooms, and even into the dungeon, where they turned off the lights to give real play to your imagination. Years ago, when it was unsealed, they discovered bones of prisoners. The whole fort is surrounded by a moat, and the walls of brick are about six feet thick, as proof against the old cannons. The history of it is quite interesting. We've only visited it, it of all the places to see in St. Augustine. There's time, though. I've never been interested in historical things, but this was rather exciting. Pyramids, here I come, some day. About my coat, mother. What gave you the idea I wanted it sold? I don't. I love it. You may wear it to get groceries in if it's not in too bad shape, but I may need it. No, no, no. I'm so happy you got your Venetian blinds. It's so important when it gets dark in winter. Do they look lovely? I had a nice letter from Ruth Nilsson and Bonnie, Alice, Connie, and Harold. Swell to hear. Quite a surprise. The little girl took her first steps alone, and Herbert's average was 77. Good, eh? Very sorry about the overweight letter. This okay? It was interesting reading Auntie Olive's letter. The tourists are arriving down here. The church is getting packed on Sundays and so many new licenses. I'll be looking for a letter from you, dear. Goodbye for now. Wish I could come home for the weekend. Love, Ruth. Mother dear, if you don't think the rest of the family would appreciate reading these next couple of pages, deplete them from the letter, okay? Honestly, dear, life gets so complicated sometimes, the more so when you think you're minding your own business and nothing could bother you, then poof, and you're going in circles. Oh, I know I compare I know compared to other problems people have, mine are minor. But just the same, I'm not very good at facing situations. I guess I've mentioned that I've been out with a few sailors and haven't liked them at all. Since I've last seen Don, I've been out with 20 different fellows. 
and since I didn't have any enjoyment in going out at all, I faced the issue, and decided I wouldn't go out at all for a while and try to reason out why I didn't get along with anyone. So I did. I was really glad that Marion had found someone she liked, and as I said, she's so convinced it's the real thing. All I hear about is how wonderful English is. Friday afternoon, English phoned me and asked if I could keep a secret. I said I probably could, so he asked if he could talk to me, but not over the phone. So he asked me out for the evening. I naturally couldn't go, but since I was just going out for a walk, he picked me up in his car. Marion and I have a bargain of long standing, never to cut in on each other's boyfriends. But he'd said he wanted to talk about Marion. Maybe I'm naive, but I thought he meant it. We talked for a while, and then I had to go home for supper. But he said he had to talk some more, so finally convinced me that since we were talking business, to have supper with him. I couldn't understand why he didn't ask Marion and didn't feel right about going. However, we drove across the river and had some shrimp, fried, very nice, but I couldn't understand what he was talking about or driving at, so I told him to take me home. I was getting a bit cross, but no, we had to see a football game. Well, Mother, that alone would cause Marion and I to split up, and I didn't even want to go. Circumstances proved there was no getting out of it. He's very handsome and quite charming and assured me he'd explain everything. He did, in a way. He asked me to be his, bo- his girlfriend, said that he'd told his boyfriends not to bother asking me out because he said, and life was too short not to be with people you like, and he decided on me. And so I told him it was just no go. So he suggested that if he and Marion broke up and she met someone else, would I go out with him then? Mother, I couldn't. He got very cross with me eventually, but practically forced me to go into Surfside and different places to dance. He's a good dancer, but I almost felt kidnapped, although he was nice, but so willful. Mother, I felt so awful, especially knowing how crazy Marion is about him. She'd be so darned hurt if she knew. Well, I told him I wouldn't go out with him, but I wasn't going to tell Marion so she doesn't know. But mother, is it ever grim hearing her talk about he says this and that and I've already heard it all. It really is ironical. But if she'd do that, but if he'd he'd do that to her and he will again, won't he? I just wish she wouldn't fall so completely in love so quickly. He said she'd taken him more seriously than he wanted her to, see? He was over last night and while she was getting dressed, asked me to forgive him and asked if I'd ever changed my mind to let him know. Strictly a playboy. I know it sounds corny. People are so dramatic down here. Well, honey, I suppose I shouldn't have wasted your reading time, but I couldn't tell anyone here. I hope Marion never finds out, although so many people saw us out. Tell me, dear, do you want to hear these things, or would you rather I waited and told you of them? A year is such a long time. Or should I try to get used to not telling people? Tell me how to be a better girl. I love you, Ruthie. Florida School for the Deaf and the Blind, St. Augustine, Florida, November 14th, 1946. My dearest mother. Hello, darling. How's my sweet mommy? What an interesting paper, the last leader post you sent me. Was it a special edition just for Ruthie? I thought it must be because there were so many things I found interesting. Dr. Anderson's speech sounded like the one I've heard so often. It's funny, but reading that finally clinched the conclusion I've come to that no more Saskatoon School for the Deaf for me, at least while JFM's there anyway. Then it was so interesting reading of Scott's commencement and Scott winning the rugby championship. I also noticed where Alice was at a shower. She'd mentioned it. Ruth Arno's engagement, Margaret Walker's wedding. Weren't his parents there? Doug's change to Minneapolis. Wow. Then there was this the article about Claire Olson Thompson studying to become a movie actress. She was in grade 9 and 10 with me. Well, it really was swell of you to send it. 
It's funny how much I appreciate hearing about things. Right about now, I'm wondering how Grandma is and if Daddy went down, how he got along. Tell me. Honestly, Mother, I can hardly believe the date. Dr. Settles was in and said, Well, just a month until holidays. And it, and it is. It seems like we've just begun. The only feeling that belies that is that I'm lonesome to see you, dear. Guess I'll just have to get over it. November 17th. The other night I dreamed it snowed, and when I woke up I just had to look out the window to see. No snow, though. I really enjoyed your last letter and Bud's, too. But what do you mean, Bud, that I'm getting lazy down here? Honestly, I've never been more energetic. As far as teaching goes, anyway, now I even go seven days a week. Saturday morning, Judy's mother arrived from Tampa for her birthday. So I went, went back at 10.30 for the party. Then this morning I had to go back for Sunday school. I'm taking an art class Friday nights, two credits. After, I decided I'd better go to bed in order to get up early for the birthday party. And English had asked me to go out with Marion and him and asked, When are you going to start living your own life anyway? Gee, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it, though. We went to church this morning and are going to hear a Negro choir later. We figured out our finances and hope we'll at least come out even, though. Butter is still a dollar a pound. Meat, 65 cents, and that's because the Piggly Wiggly has set that as a ceiling. Others are at their own. So living comes high. But it's worth it, and I feel so selfish living in this beautiful country. We often go for a walk, and it's so pretty by the water. The poinsettias are in bloom. They're more cerise than red, and the flower is the yellow part in the middle. The red petals are not petals, but the leaves which turn red around the yellow part. The rose bushes right beside our steps are in bloom with pretty pink and red roses. They smell lovely. You know, it's really funny. I always wondered just what it would be like to be associating with Negroes. Well, my schoolroom is just wet west to the kitchen in Bloxham Cottage, and the Negroes sit out under the trees in back. Honestly, they don't sleep, but just seem motionless. Well, they're supposed to clean the rooms, boards, etc., and one old fellow is the main janitor. He's tall, thin, and has yellow eyes and black, wrinkled skin. Marion says he gives her the creeps. Every once in a while, when I'm teaching, I'll look up and he's standing in the door. Then he grins and mumbles something and empties the waste paper basket or some excuse. He's always around and he spends hours brushing down the stairs. Well, we've had several arguments about what I want left on the blackboard. He can't read Do Not Erase, so I mark it with X's. For two months, I've asked him to put up a blind for me. I can't reach it, but he's so busy. Finally, I asked the house mother to ask him. All he said was, I'm quitting, I'm quitting. Something else crossed him, and he hid in the broom closet, and they couldn't get him out for an hour. Oh, heavens, what people! It was funny to hear about Miss Benny. Ruth Nilsson said Lori told her that Miss Benny had been picked up in Saskatoon for shoplifting. Nice to hear you were talking to Mr. Reed, Mom, and Mr. Walker, Bud. Good old Scott. I'm really glad Bud's doing so well as president. And my, old, and my old theme song. I do hope he's doing his work well in school. It's amazing the returns Marion and I have had from just an extra little push five years ago. I only hope I find more to do because the further along I go, I believe you only get what you put into things, and I've been so lucky. I'd better earn a right to it. I've had quite a lot of encouragement in the little bit of art I've taught here, more than I ever had for all I did in Saskatoon. Of course, that's not the idea to, to get credit for it, but it sure gives you more incentive. Marion sent cards to some of her former pupils, and two have written and said that some of the little girls want Miss Smallshaw's address to write to me. Does it ever thrill me? They're so young, you know. I love you, my dear. Write. Love, Ruth. P.S. 
Things are really starting to hum down here as far as tourists go. Honestly, license plates from every state in the Union. And in front of the post office today was a beautiful big sedan. Colombian consulate to U.S. Really cosmopolitan, eh? The Negro Choir was really a new experience for me. About five miles out is the Negro Normal School and College. We drove out, and is it ever interesting to see educated Negroes? So many we see are a poorer class. There were only about eight other white people, so we were definitely in a minority. The music director presented himself to us on the campus, and I guess it's the first really educated Negro I've met. He was young and seemed nice, but it's a bit awkward when some of them sort of stare at you. The music was lovely. I really got a thrill out of it. So often I have heard Negro spirituals, but never seen a solid Negro choir. They chanted some pieces, then a deep voice would break in. You know, did I ever get a kick out of it? Really, it sort of does something to you. They're very rhythmical. It seemed funny, too, with the whole audience Negroes. The girls have a straightening process done to their hair, and just the opposite to our permanent waving machines. I never knew that before. These didn't dress quite so loudly as some we see. It's really a sight to see Negro girls with purple socks, red and orange dresses, although the educated ones dress nicely. We drove by a Harlem, Harlem nightclub that really looked lively. For now, and I'm often thinking of you, love, Ruth. Florida School for the Deaf and the Blind, St. Augustine, Florida, November 23, 1946. My dear, sweet mother. Hello, dear. All week I've been planning to write to you, and about the only phrase I could think of to put down was, I'm homesick. Honestly, it seemed to discount everything else and seemed to be the only thing of importance. But a letter, Dearest Mother, I'm Homesick, Love Ruthie, would have been a bit silly. However, when I did get such a nice long letter from you, it made everything okay again, really, and I'm feeling okay again. Isn't it funny how people react differently to the same situation? Marion and I both in us in similar positions, yet the first few weeks she seemed homesick, but hasn't been since. At first, the newness of everything kept my attention, and now I often think, gee, I wish I could go home this weekend and talk to Mommy. So it is. I really have been busy enough to not be that way, but it slips in. Honey, I wished so much you'd been here the other night, as I'm sure you'd have enjoyed it. We didn't want to go, but Georgia Dunham, the Canadian, insisted that we go to a bridge party in the Buckingham Hotel in aid of Greek war relief. I managed not to play, nor did Marion, but I did help pour drinks. Imagine Ruthie pouring punch with a countess, Countess de Leslie. About half there were in formal dresses. Marion held the box, and I pulled the lucky ticket, 38, Zoe Marshall's ticket. She's my supervising teacher. Keeping in good with the boss, eh? It was quite a coincidence out of about 80 people. The prize was a beautiful plant. I just know you'd have liked the whole thing, Mother dear. There are a lot of people down here already for the winter, and I guess I mentioned the yachts on their way south. One is even fitted like a Chinese boat, and the man has his two Chinese women along. The docks are so beautiful at night with the lights from them. Do you know I could hardly believe... You'd been wearing your fur coat already, that it was so cold. Twenty-one years there, and I've forgotten already how cold it goes in Saskatchewan. You know my green coat. I haven't worn it since I left Regina, nor any coat. Nor have I worn stockings since I left Regina. Bud's whist drive sounded good. I'm really glad he's so good at organizing, and I missed his little note. The longer I live, the more I'm convinced varsity's th the thing. I've been lucky without it, but boy, what I could do with it. And I hope Bud's preparing himself for four more years of school. 
I'd like him to go to the University of Saskatchewan, as I'm also convinced it's good. If he worked next summer, I think you could swing it, too. Anyway, that's my two cents worth. Believe me, bud, if I'd had the merest chance of talking the family into it, I would have. When you're 18, four years sounds long, but now that I'm in my fourth year teaching, it seems merely a short while. Right now, it seems to me too bad that Daddy didn't get a job at the Star Phoenix. Then Bud could have gone straight on to varsity. Yes, Mother, I still hear from Don. He says he's on the verge of a nervous breakdown, and in the middle of a stack of homework books, he writes, so I'll know he's thinking of me. He says he's really been working. Four exams this week and hasn't been out for ages. And Frank? Honestly, I don't know his address. Remember he wrote before I left? Well, he told me his boarding house address, and I forgot it. I'll write to him when he's home at Christmas, though. So Morrow's give up, given up her Saskatoon job, eh? And the break she had there. Thanks, dear, for the papers. Tell me, would you be interested in seeing a Miami paper? I'll send it. I'm glad you're wearing my coat, but don't wear it out. I may need it some day, honey. The letter you forwarded was this $54.40 check, and I'll also enclose the $3 one from the medical co-op. Can or would you please cash them and put the money in the bank for me, please, with yours, okay? If you have any trouble, let me know. Marion's itching to go, so I'll write again, dear. We're going downtown. Last night I went to my art class, two hours credit from the University of Florida, $10. I have seven hours credit from the University of Michigan, nine out of 126 for an A.B. degree. Hopeless, eh? Maybe the bonds will help. Afterwards, we went dancing out at Surfside Casino with the fellows, and the night before went to the show, to each his own. Really quite a story. Bye for now, dear, and write to me, because it makes me feel so much better. Hope Pop had, an, had a happy birthday. I was a little at sea as to what to get him. Love, Ruthie. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. And I'll see you next time.